Hey guys, how's it going? My name is Daniel. Welcome everybody to Crystalline. We're back. We're back at the inn. And I think it's morning somewhere. That was the best sleep I've had since I ran to Terra. What time is it? Squint of the sun shining through the window. Seems like it's, fair, uh, it's pretty late. By the way, just to catch you all up on everything that happened, we got a fire spirit apparently absorbed into us. And now we're going to be trying to help kids by catching a particular... Uh, Individual that asked them to steal crystal. I'm not sure what they do with the crystal, but I guess we'll see it for now. Set up on a pong and a pong girl bounces in the foot of the bed enthusiastically. Boy, boy. Oh, where'd you get in here? Boy. He bounces again, rolls over to cuddle against me. Zack has already left the room. I wonder if anyone else is around. Throwing off my blankets, I get ready for the day and head downstairs. There are a few patrons already frequenting the lobby, but no signs on my team. Kara said she was going to get an early start, but I'm not sure where everyone else went. We did say we'd meet back up uh, here this evening, so I guess I'll see them then. I haven't gotten anything planned today, though, so I'm just going to take it easy. I begin walking towards the town square. Follow my feet as if one, as as it wanders the streets, taking the time enjoying. Follow my feet as a as it wanders. Wait. I follow my feet as it wanders. My, my feet are the wandering, I guess. I'm not sure, whatever. I'm gonna ignore that. I've forgotten how relaxing it is to have nothing on the agenda. Boy, boy. Eventually, we reach the square. I recognize the statue of Alania. <gasps> Small brown dog, only a little larger than a pongo, watches us. His tail wags slowly when he catches our attention. Pet the dog, play fetch, ear dog, bork bork. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm gonna pet the dog. I'm gonna say hello. Hey, dog. He lost. Dog wags his tail. I extend my hand and he cautiously approaches. After giving me a few good exploratory sniffs, he barks excitedly. Good boy. His tongue, his tongue lolls out as I scratch behind his ears. I think it means it rolls out instead of lolls out. I don't know, whatever. Pongo bounces angrily. Dog stares at the Pongo as if noticing him for the first time. Boy, boy. Pongo pouts and jumps even higher. Dog cowers and whines. Pongo, what's up with you? Boy. I go to pet the dog, but the Pongo butts my hand away. Boy, boy. Are you jealous? Boy. I reach out a hand and pat the Pongo, who seems to calm down slightly. Dog perks up as if as the Pongo relaxes. Boy. He wags his tail as he nuzzles the as he nuzzles the Pongo. The pongo bristles at the dog's touch and scrabbles back. Boy, boy. He hops away, but the dog happily chases him. <laughs> As the dog catches him, he licks the pongo, who grimaces. Oh, he's playing with you. Boy. <laughs> Such a tiny interaction between the pongo and the dog. But man, this makes me like miss the game. Seriously, like the, I don't know what it is. I don't know what it is. Like. I know it's a visual novel. I'm looking at a static image and reading text. But man, it's actually kinda of fun. It's actually kinda of fun just I guess experiencing the story in such a medium. I don't know man, it's it's kinda of cool. It's kinda of, it's kinda of neat. Mocha Little girl races over to the dog, who barks excitedly at her presence. She throws her arms around him and holds him close as, as he licks her face. I thought I lost you. Suddenly she notices the panga and her eyes grow wide. She gently pats the Pongo in the head. His little frown melts into a smile. Boy, boy. Are you lost too? Boy, boy. He hops over to me. Girl looks me over and then smiles shyly. Oh, um, hi. Hey, is that your dog? She nods. Thanks for finding him for me. Sometimes he's too fast and I can't catch him. Now I partially want to come back and try the Bork Bork. <laughs> <laughs> Answer choice and see how the dog would react. <laughs> Mocha sniffs around my feet and nudges my hand to be pet, but the pongo bounces between us. Boy. The girl giggles and waves. I guess we should be leaving. Bye bye, little pongo friend. Thanks for keeping Mocha company. <laughs> bye. Before Mocha can escape again, the girl slips a leash around his collar, and two of them gradually disappear from view. I look down at my pongo, who looks back up at me. Put him on the shoulder, he's found where he is. I'll put him on the shoulder. I smile and pat my head off. Pat he my head, pat my head. Yeah, good boy. <laughs> I pat my head. I'm such a good boy. 
<laughs> God, that's so bizarre. I smile and pat his head affectionately. He squirms happily against me, then hops onto my shoulder and nuzzles in my face. How about we continue on our walk together, hmm? Bye. Together, we head further into town. I decided to check out some of the storefronts and streets that I didn't get a chance to see yesterday. The Pongo wanders off whenever he gets too crowded, but he always seems to find his way back to me. After most of the day has passed, I decide it's time to return to the inn. Leanna, Amelia, and Zack are already there waiting. Leanna stands when I arrive. Here, I got you something. She passed me a gauntlet similar to the one on her wrist. A sphere inlaid in the same color as Leanna's. Must be a wind crystal. Is that a manipulator? Yeah, I was thinking about your last attempt at casting, and I figured this might be more helpful with future training. Yeah, I attempt. We didn't. We did nothing. We literally did nothing. Having the manipulator as a focal point of concentration is how Amelia and I learned to cast. Thanks. Carol finally returns, and the attention shifts to her. The crystal pickup will happen soon. We should start heading over. Leanna nods. Once they complete the exchange, we should follow the guy to see if he leads us to their hideout. He might have other partners, so we should be on guard. I still can't think of why they'd want these crystals. Energy crystals have varying utilizations, some of which are outlawed. Kara seems a bit surprised, but Liana doesn't react to that. Thinking about what these outlawed utilizations could be making, utilizations could be making, could be makes me uneasy. Yeah, sorry. We have our plan. Let's get started. We trace back to the ruins and find the abandoned house with the children. Instead of entering, we spread out around the perimeter to maximize visibility on anyone approaching. Karen and I stay close to the house and hide behind some fallen bricks. Our field of vision is limited, but we're close enough to overhear any conversations that take place inside. After we position ourselves, we wait. We don't know when the man's going to show up and after about 20 minutes, start to get fidgety. I wish the kids had given us time. Who knows how long we'd be stuck out here? My legs are starting to cramp. But as I shift, Carrie shoots me a warning glance and I force myself to push through it. Finally, a man approaches. He looks to be in his 20s, surprisingly wears some, something that resembles a beanie on his head. Carrie yanks my collar, so we duck down. She covers my mouth up with her hand, puts a finger to her lips. Looks like our job is to listen in. The others will be our eyes. I hear a door creak followed by the faint sound of footsteps. Hey yo, you punks got my crystals or what? Listen to I listen for any extra footsteps, but it sounds like the man comes solo. Here. There's a rustling of a bag being opened. What is this? These crystals are weak, yo. That's all we could find. Nah, nah, this ain't good, man. Sorry. The boy's voice is weak. Huh. <laughs> the bag closes and the man grunts as he lifts it up. Wait, where are our coins? You'll get your payment when you deliver, yo. This is only half of what you promised. As a silence, carefully peek out to see the boy straining his hand clenched. Fine. That's what I thought. Stranger lugs the bag over his shoulder, quickly dug back down as he exits the house. Time to go. I turn to face Kara, who wears a serious frown, has a furry and fury in her eyes. I don't think I've ever seen her angry before, let alone this angry. She looks like she's about to rip the guy's head off. Kara? Did you not see that? We should take him out now. Think about the big picture? Yeah, probably think about the big picture. Could just be a messenger. We have to stick to the plan. Kara clenches and unclenched and unclenches her jaw. Then she nods, still fuming. I know you're right, but still. You get us just as soon enough. Let's hurry up and go. Yeah. We we'll trail the man out to the Stonecrest. Many children stay behind buildings and keep to the shadows, so as not to be spotted. Kara slips in and out of the alleys with ease, and it takes a lot of my concentration not to lose her. No wonder she's always sneaking up on us. I assume the rest of our team is also following him as I'm unable to spot them. That's for the best. Less chance of being noticed, the better. Outside the city gates, it's a little harder to stay hidden, as it opens up into a more open field. At least since we are spread out, it won't be easy for him to escape if he tries to. We successfully follow him to what looks like an abandoned train car. Yeah, it looks like a... Very much like a train car, lots of gems everywhere, holy hell. 
It's like a trailer park. Some kind of a dark smoke emitting from the top. The man pauses and there's a crouch lower behind cover as he look around. As he looks around. He doesn't spot any of us and enters the train. Kara gains Kara again puts her finger on her lips and a nod. Staying low, we sneak towards the train. The windows are blocked off, but we crouch below them anyway. Can you hear muffled voices as I gently press my ear against the train? Yo, Mr. White! The man's name is Jesse Pinkman. Jesse Pinkman, bitch. Oh my god. Oh my god. I love these developers. I love these developers. Jesse Pinkman, bitch, goes up and collects some crystals to meet Mr. White. Wow. Uh, Breaking Bad, if you haven't seen it, go watch it. Oh, it's so good. Jesse, how many times do I have to tell you to call me Heisenberg? Heisenberg, oh my god. Oh my god. <laughs> oh, oh, wow. Okay. i never seen the Breaking Bad reference be so unironically introduced into this. This is gold. This is literally gold. This is like great A gold. Oh my god. Like, sell for money. It's like big money kind of gold. Jesus Christ. Oh. The man speaks softly, but his tone is strict and disapproving. My bad, but I got some crystals. We gotta get the- uh, we gotta get the line. We gotta get him to say, bitch. We gotta get him to- we gotta get him to say that. Come on. Let's see. There are many, and they're pretty small. I don't think we'd be able to get much out of them anyway. It doesn't matter their size. Once we're done cooking them, they'll be exponentially more effective. Yep, uh, to summarize just uh, briefly as a synopsis, Breaking Bad is about meth dealers. I don't know, man. They're tiny. How does that even work? It's a simple matter of science. You serious? You can do something like that? Indeed. Yeah, Mr. White! Yeah, science! Oh my god. Science, bitch! Oh my god. These classic lines are coming back to me now. Heisenberg. Oh, right. My bad, yo. I hear you faint clanging of glassware. I wish you could see what they're doing. Sharp snap cracks somewhere from behind me. What was that? Shift out of position to look behind me and see an animal scampering away. As I breathe a sigh of relief, notice the absence of noise in train. What was that? Before I have a chance to get down, one of the windows swings open, and in face to face with both of them, the younger man with a beanie, Jesse, stares at me with wide, wild eyes. The second man is much older, maybe the age of his father, and fixes me with an inscrutable stare. He looks surprisingly normal, not like someone who would get mixed up with something shady. Jesse turns around and darts out of the back exit. Run! Mr. White joins him as Kara and I sprint to the other side of the train. Thankfully, Liana and Zack are already there. Liana points her blade at them. Surrender and come with us peacefully. Jesse looks like he's about to bolt, but Zack fixes his discharge on him. I wouldn't move if I were you. Crap, what do we do? <laughs> Why are you laughing at a time like this? Amelia stands a good distance away, home manipulator, <laughs> home manipulator glowing. After looking over the older man, she frowns. The brandy no void. Quite the observation, young miss. Wait, what? You're a part of Void? Mr. White merely smiles. I didn't sign up for this! Don't be so naive. You think the crystals were just going to magically create more energy? I knew somebody... Some, some kind of dark stuff was gonna happen here. Your intent was to perform shadow transmutation on the crystals to create tainted spheres. Again, he doesn't answer. It appears confrontation is imminent. Why don't we even up the odds? 
With a flash, Mr. Bright grabs two shadow spheres from his belt, similar to the one I saw in Raven Pass. He throws them to the ground and dark smog emits, curling in the air. The enemy acts first and blasts her wind magic to dissipate the smoke. In its base are two shadow creatures. The warped appendages are nothing that I recognize, and long shadow claws come into a sharp point. This is stuff of nightmares. Stand between us and Mr. Wright. Mr. White with Jesse covering behind him. Shadow familiars! This is getting way too crazy for me. I'm out. Jesse breaks into a sprint and Karen immediately gives chase. I've got him! Two of them dash out of sight. Unfortunately, you've disrupted my work, which means I have to start all over again. So, I'm going to get going. He channels a spell and starts to run. As he continues to chant the spell, shadows crawl up his leg, threatening to engulf him completely in shadow. Can't let him get away. Diana looks from, man to the uh, from the man to the familiars. As much as I want to go after him, our top priority is to defeat these shadow creatures. Indeed. Shadow familiars this close in proximity to a city can wreak havoc and incite widespread panic. They would know better than I to trust their instincts. Look back at Heisenberg being swallowed by shadow. Once, again, once shadows fade away, he disappears. Zack readies his discharges, a small smile on his face. Sounds like a challenge. My heart races as drama played. It's getting crazy. Our next version mini game will be available in future builds. Y'all gotta, y'all gotta, y'all gotta add it. Y'all gotta add the uh, the mini game already. Since I don't want to be overpowered, I will lose this one. Granted, we are fighting freaking shadow monsters. It only makes sense for us to get our ass kicked this time. Shadow Familia strikes me hard and I fly back, crashing to the ground. My head slams into the hard ground, my vision blackens, and my consciousness fades. Ooh, wow, we got our ass kicked. Completely. He's waking up. My head pounds, set up and groan as my body protests. Diana hovers worriedly over me while Zack and Amelia look calm. Thank goodness! As I stated before, he only lost consciousness and would awaken soon. What happened? You got bitch slapped. Zack! I mean, we probably did. He shrugs. You took a nasty hit. How long was I out for? Around 15 minutes. What about the Shadow Familiars? They have been eliminated. I'm a little embarrassed by how unhelpful I was during the fight, but I'm sick of the glad that dealt with it. I'm not sure I'm ready for another hit like that. Now that I've properly looked at them, they seem pretty exhausted. Probably took a lot of effort to defeat those creatures. Can you walk? I think so. Push myself unsteadily to my feet. Honestly, I think we're gonna we might end up doing like two separate playthroughs of this game. While it's still in early access, we'll go through whatever chapter is available, and then once the actual full product is out, re experience it, re you know, re yeah, re experience it really, and see what it's like with all the minigames and everything, especially when I fully start implementing them. Hey! Turn at the south, uh, to the sound of Cora's vo Kara's voice. She waves at us with one hand and she uses the other to drag Jesse back. She plops him down in front of us, and he falls ungracefully to the ground. See that his hands are bound. Kara stands over him, her face grim. Now, you're going to tell us exactly what you know. I don't know Jack Squat. Mr. White was paying me to get crystals and that's it, yo! So you were not an accomplice to the shadow transmutation? I don't even know what the shadow transportation is! Transmutation. Exactly! We glared him. Look, I made a few deliveries to him. The first couple of times he wouldn't tell me what he did, but paid some good coin. But later he said he was going to show me so I could help with his operations. He was going to give solid pay for that too, yo. I look him up and down. He stares desperately at us, uh, and it's clear to me that he's scared. It doesn't seem like this kind of man void would trust with any kind of responsibilities. I'm inclined to believe he is just looking for some fast cash. Kara seems skeptical, but Amelia and Liana seem to have come to the same conclusion I have. Zack crosses his arms. Better hope the guards believe your story. Just looks like he's about to protest, but sighs instead. I think he'll realize that there's no chance he's going to escape. The bag of stolen crystals is in there. He didn't grab it before running out. 
Then enters the train and returns with a bulging bag. Let's go turn him into the guards. They'll take it from here. Well, Zack calls Jesse back to his feet and leads him back towards town. Luckily it's late at night, so very few people walk the street. A few who do give us long stares as we pass. Not even a single like a f like not even a single bitch from Jesse. I'm not gonna lie, not gonna lie, y'all, not gonna lie, devs. I'm maybe a very tiny disappointed. I love the reference, but I'm just a little disappointed that it wasn't a single bitch in the whole thing. And don't get me wrong, it's just I'm not cursing for the sake of cursing. It's actually something the guy says. It's really freaking iconic. Watch the show, seriously, it's good. When we arrive at the guard barracks, the personal duty gets to his feet. He looks at Liana in recognition. Oh, it's you again. We found the source of your missing crystals. Zack pushes Jesse towards and stumbles into the guard, who grabs a hold of him. The guard eyes him up and down. It's this guy? Oh man, it was all cause of Void! The guard stares at him, clearly unconvinced. Uh-huh. Maybe in lockup you'll have time to think up a better story. I'm telling you the truth, bitch! <laughs> Never mind, I take it back, I take it all back! A perfect reference. A perfect, complete, perfect reference. I asked for the one thing, and it happened. This is to your devs. I'm not sure if they ever watched the video, but if they do get a glimpse of it, thank you. Thank you. This was awesome. This, 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 probably the best reference in modern day, I guess. Yeah, modern pop culture reference I've ever experienced. One of the best in a video game. Thank you. Thank y'all. The guard frowns and passes Jesse off to another guard, who takes him into the back. Then the guard turns back to us. Hopefully you won't have any more issues. The guard grins and looks relieved. I can't thank you all enough. You have no idea how much of a thorn in my side this has all been. As promised, there's a reward for helping us catch the culprit. Produces a heavy satchel of gold, which he hands over to us. Thanks again for all your help, and I hope you have a safe night. Thanks. We leave the guardhouse and equally divvy up the reward money. As everything settles down, the group decides to return to the inn. I'm glad we got to the bottom of things, but I can't help but wonder what will happen to those kids. There's nothing I could do, share more reward with them. You know what? Yeah, we're gonna go share the reward. I'll meet you guys at the end. I think I forgot something. We gotta be nice. I slip away before anyone can ask me any questions. I make my way back to those kids. They were dependent on those crystal money to survive, and I can't sit by and do nothing to help them. I know I don't have much to offer, but maybe giving them a cut of my reward can help them tied over. Quietly, I enter the house so as not to spook the children. As I near the trap door, I hear Kara's voice. How did she get here so fast? What is she doing here? Slowing my steps, I silently creep towards the trap door and spy on Kara and the kids. Here you go guys, take this. She hands the oldest boy a fat coin purse. Must have had the same idea about sharing our reward money. The boy silently accepts it. Too shocked to be by the amount of money to even speak. The man won't be coming for crystals anymore, so use that to help you find a new way to survive. The boy nods nimbly, numbly. Some of the younger children huddle together, clearly frightened for their futures. Kara smiles reassuringly. I know it seems scary, but I promise if you stick together, you'll be fine. The kids hug each other. I won't let anything happen to anyone. Good. I know you won't. Take care of yourselves, okay? and stay out of trouble. Kara turns to leave as I scramble out of sight. She doesn't notice me as she hurries away. It seems like she got a soft spot for these kids. But I do what I come here to do and get back before people get too suspicious. Hey kids. I go down to the trap room. The oldest boy looks up at me in surprise. Here. Toss him a small bag of coins with his fumbles before catching. He looks genuinely surprised as if he can't believe what's happening. But why? If it weren't for you, wouldn't have caught the bad guys. Kids were a big help. Really? He looks at the other children who gives him hopeful eyes, then he grins. Thank you. I nod. I should be getting back. Once I return to the upstairs, I hear the children scramble below a series of excited gasps as they inspect their reward money. Wow, the girl gave us so much! I've never seen so much money before in my life! 
The boy still gave a lot, though. More than we got from crystals. Oh, just how much money did Kara give? Was that her whole reward? For Treasure Hunter, that seems very generous. Maybe there's more to it. I wonder what it could be as I return to the inn and meet up with the rest of the group. Call her right now! She was an orphan. She was in the same situation as them. She was left with nothing. She had to struggle to survive. And now she just returned a favor to the kids also in struggle. Call her right now! It sounds cliche, but I feel like it would be just right. Sometimes cliches are just right.